In this part 4 and last movie of the series, you'll learn to use the Mass FX toolset. Actually, before you get to that, there's one thing we left out in the previous movies. You'll need to remove some of the top stone blocks to shape the ramparts. Do so in the front view. For every two full blocks of stone, you need to remove one. This includes the spaces where the fragments are defined. When done, right-click an empty area next to the main toolbar and choose Mass FX Toolbar. The toolbar appears in the viewport. The first icon on the toolbar displays the Mass FX Toolset dialog, so go ahead and click it. Before you start assigning objects to the simulation, take a look at the Scene Settings under the World tab. There's an enabled option named Use Ground Plane. This ensures that objects falling down never fall below Z level 0. This shouldn't be a problem in this case because Z level 0 happens to be at the lowest point in the geometry, bottom of the moat. However, if you already have geometry representing its terrain and against which objects affected by gravity will collide, you may want to disable this option. Leave it enabled in this case. It will prevent any debris from seeping through the openings. Gravity is by default enabled and for most purposes should be left alone when working with earthly scenes. The number of sub-steps and solver iterations control the accuracy of the simulation. The higher these values, the more accurate the simulation, but also the longer it takes to calculate. The sub-steps value refers to the number of calculations between frames. The default is 3. You can start there and then work your way up if you need to. The solver iterations value affects dynamics constraints, like you would use on the links of a chain. You are not using constraints in this example, so you can leave this value alone as well. It will have no effect on this scene. Collision overlap defines how much objects can interpenetrate. Leave the default value for now. You will start with static objects. As previously mentioned, static objects are included in the simulation for collision purposes. However, they do not move under the influence of other objects or even gravity. Examples of static objects in this scene include the outer terrain, inner courtyard, the stairway, the lower part of the wall, and also the bricks you have identified as unyielding. So make sure these objects are selected. Remember to use the control key to add to the selection even when using selection sets. Click and hold the second icon on the Mass FX toolbar and choose Set Selected as Static Rigid Body. Go to the Mass FX Edit tab. The selected objects are shown as static bodies, but you need to assign them physical properties. Physical properties help define an object's density or mass, its friction, and bounciness. You can assign these manually or choose from a list of presets. In this case, Choose the Concrete preset. The other important feature in this tab is how the simulation views the object's mesh. There are many options to choose from, but the two most common options are Original and Convex. When the physical mesh type is set to Original, an object is calculated in its entirety, taking all the vertices into account. When an object is set to Convex, its representation goes down to a simplified mesh that runs around its outer borders. Set the Mesh Type option to Convex. It will fit most objects in the selection except for one, the Terrain. To understand this better, select the Terrain object and isolate it. Notice how it is simplified in Convex mode. Although this helps with the simulation, in this particular case, it is not a good idea to use convex mode. The differences in elevation and the depression of the mode would not be taken into account. Make sure you leave the terrain to Physical Mesh Original. Other objects, such as the stairway or the courtyard, wouldn't suffer too much from being simplified into a convex mode. Certainly the bricks are a good candidate of being calculated in convex mode. Next, 
you deal with dynamic objects. These are objects that need to be affected by collisions and gravity. Select the fragment selection set and the dynamic blocks surrounding them. Assign them as dynamic rigid bodies. Set their physical material to concrete again. You can always change that later on and experiment with other properties if you wish. Notice that their physical mesh is set to convex. This should work fine as using the original option might be too much for so many pieces. However, it is crucial to enable start in sleep mode so that the dynamic objects don't start falling due to gravity. This option ensures they stay in place until they are hit. Finally, you need to work on the two animated stones. Select them both and set them as kinematic rigid bodies. Again, set them as concrete, convex objects. Obviously, the two stones are partially animated, at least for the first leg of travel. The first stone hits the wall at about frame 67, and the second stone at around frame 101. Select the stone that hits the wall first and enable the Until Frame option. Set the frame number to 64. That's a few frames before the stone hits the wall. This is telling the Mass Effect simulation to take over the animation of the stone after frame 64. Do the same with the other stone. Set Mass Effect to take over at frame 98. You are now ready to test the animation. Go back to frame 0 and click the Mass Effect Start Simulation button. The stone hitting the wall nearer the top has a bigger effect than the one hitting lower. Both are not penetrating though. You can help by giving them more mass. Stop the simulation and then reset it. Select the projectiles and go to the Mass Effects Edit tab. Set the preset to None and change the density to 25. This will increase the mass by a little over three times. This certainly looks like more destructive power. Select the stone that hits lower and give it even more mass by increasing its density all the way to 100. Test the animation again. It looks much better. Keep on fine-tuning the simulation with a bit more trial and error. Alternatively, the motion of dynamic objects can be dampened so that they travel slower. This can be done by selecting dynamic bodies, and going to the Advanced Rollout in the Edit tab. There, you can slow down the motion by adjusting the linear value and the rotation by adjusting the angular value. Press F4 to remove Edged Faces display. When you are ready, bring back the non-SIM objects into view. To bake the animation for rendering purposes, go to the Mass Effects Tools tab. Test the animation one last time before baking it. If you're wondering about water splashes, remember that Mass Effects at this time only deals with rigid bodies. If you absolutely need water splashes, you could try and use particle effects but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Click the Bake All button to create keyframes for animated objects in the simulation. Render the camera view to disk or view the animation result that has been provided to you. A completed scene has also been provided where the Mass Effects animation has been set up but not baked yet. In this four-part series, you learned how to create and set up elements to add to a Mass Effects simulation. 
you learn the different rigid body types available and how to adjust their physical properties. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time.